in a moment of pure triumph. The Discovery Channel Eco Challenge. Morocco, an ancient land of mystery and contrast. High Atlas Mountains to the pitiless Sahara. From deep, narrow gorges to forbidding peaks. It's a timeless place beyond the bounds of the ordinary. Now the age old and the modern meet. This arena is so vast and trackless that any miscalculation can spell disaster. Team Rubicon is approaching passport control number 10 in 21st place. A map reading error sent this team of three women and one man up the wrong mountain. Oh man, PC 10. Long awaited. Did you guys get lost? Yeah, we did. We what? took a different uh, golly system. The train features here, it's so much the same and stark and just really thought it was the right one. And the altitude, 10,600 feet, is punishing Army Sergeant Kathy Callahan. She's a two-time Eco Challenge veteran, but the thin air is overwhelming her lungs. She's okay. I think she's just um, hasn't been at altitude before, and uh, she's scared. She hasn't experienced that feeling, and uh, on top of cold, it just made her really nervous. Kathy and rookie racer Lisa Jung joined Rubicon only weeks before the race. The team reflects Rebecca's belief that a successful race depends on athletes, not gender. I know so many great female athletes and there's definitely a different dynamic that goes on of communication and patience and understanding. It seems to me there's no reason why there shouldn't be more women on the team. Despite Kathy's condition, Rubicon presses on. The first place team is nearly 20 miles ahead. Spain's team, Sepos, has built a commanding five-hour lead with endurance and masterful navigation. But the secret is training. Training and having the mental strength to put up with whatever there is. You're hungry, thirsty, you've got heavy bags and not enough clothes to cover up properly. You have to put up with a lot. In the last two and a half days, Sepos has slept only four hours. A daring strategy. The big question for Sepos now is, will the lack of sleep pay back later? Are they going to be too goofy now to make more navigational decisions? Sepos is navigating through Morocco's high Atlas Mountains. PC-7 marks the start of the second race leg, a 100-mile journey from the desert through the mountains to Camp 2. Sepos is in front. Rubicon is far back. Teams are converging on PC-14. Here they will confront the massive rock formation known as Jebel Oujdat and a 340-foot rappel of its sheer north face, equal to climbing down a 34-story building. PC-14 perches on a rocky ledge. The only access, a treacherous goat path. 
Tired and ailing, once favoured team Aussie arrives in sixth place. Oh, we're plodding along, we've had our ups and downs. Yeah, it's hard to get a, a moment when all four, are, all four members are feeling good at the same time. Captained by Jane Hall, the Aussies tackled the rappel while enduring illness and injuries. Can we unclick those? After winning the 1995 Eco Challenge, Jane led her team to second place last year in Australia. Eco Challenge races, to me, have been significant in making me see the big picture of life. It's made me realise that you can do things that you never thought you could. It appears that the races are superhuman, but they're not. They're just a whole bunch of average type guys and gals who want to get out there and have a go. And I think there's a lot of people around the world that really want to do that, but don't think they can. And they just need a normal sort of person like me, or any one of us, to go up and say, well, this is what we do. You can do it too if you want. Right behind the Aussies, the Americans of Team Vale are gaining ground. Led by Billy Madison, these racers from Colorado's high country are unexpected contenders. Get on there, right? yeah, get stuck in. No, mine's pretty yeah, tight. Okay. Let's get out of here. Ciao. Ciao. Um, well, it was really neat to meet the top competitors and be actually in the thick of things this year.